What's good, family? Welcome back to the channel. We have officially entered the second half of the year, July 1st. I hope everyone is accomplishing their goals and really staying focused on their dream life and just continue moving towards that. You feel what I'm saying? But in this video, we have three TikTokers who lured a girl for a sleepover and then tried to kill her. This went viral on TikTok. And I feel like people are just becoming more and more delusional as the days go by. I'm going to be honest with y'all. Because now we have TikTokers plotting some murder. Like, what? This is crazy. Let's get straight into this. When 14-year-old Kira Hart was invited to a sleepover by her three new friends, what she likely expected was a night of gossip, popcorn, and camaraderie. What happened to her was straight out of a horror film. Stop. I will, I, will ne I will never officially know what happens at a girl's sleepover. Just saying. Only the gay best friends would, are the only guys that would know what happens at a girl's sleepover. What happened to her was straight out of a horror film. Stop. Push me. Do what happened. Kill me. The girls broadcasted the incident online for the world to see. Basically, just someone. It was funny. And then suffered the potent drawback of their own virality. Backlash. See, after what happened that night became public knowledge. Terrifying, like, let's kind of explain really like how scary it was. And one of the alleged offenders' supposed track record was exposed. It's alleged a 14-year-old girl was involved in both the... The public has demanded justice. But with all this resentment brewing, will the judicial system answer the pleas for action? Three girls aged 12, 13, and 14 years old have been charged with multiple offenses. Or will the community take so, Since this video is involving minors, just for YouTube purposes, I just need to say that we're just reporting news. Matters into their own hands. Multiple offenses. Or will the community take matters into their own hands? Because they are young. What the heck? What are y'all doing? Ah, sleepovers, those overnight hangouts that come to define the brief window of adolescence when a kid's only weekend responsibility is to have fun before school starts again on Monday. We're meant to look back on these bonding experiences fondly, but of course, the memories that stick aren't all junk food binges, movie marathons, and pillow fights. See, it doesn't matter if it's a case of middle of the night homesickness, a game of truth or dare that takes brutal honesty to new extremes, or a prank gone wrong. The fact remains, it's not a sleepover until somebody cries. And when four teenage girls got together on the night of March 11th, 2023, into Wanton, Queensland, Australia, well, more was shed than just tears. Ladies, comment that down below. Is that true? Like, did y'all cry at sleepovers? What? Is that a sleepover? It's While sleepover. not a lot is known about the events that led to that fateful night in the land down under, what we do know is that 14-year-old Kira Hart claimed she accepted the invite to the slumber party under the pretense that the other three girls attending were her friends, an optimistic if misguided impression. See, while Kiara believed she became close with these girls over the previous two weeks, the twisted events of the sleepover would make one fact painfully clear. They were not her friends. Go, just go. Well, just get it over and done with, bro. Please, I'm doing nothing. Please, I'm doing nothing. Don't punch your face like a little you are. But before we get to what exactly happened on March 11th, let's first look at the teenagers that formed the troublesome trio Kira planned to spend the night with. The, the pack was made up of a 13-year-old that will be referred to as C for anonymity, and two sisters, 12-year-old S and 14-year-old R. And while it's impossible to say how the trio behaved in person, the young teens freely shared controversial content on their social media, including scantily clad images. I'm like, so right now. <laughs> Leaving a virtual footprint that could imply that the teens were, well, rough around the edges. But on the night of March 11th, rough didn't begin to describe what the girls were capable of. The trio greeted Kira's arrival at the Tawantan home with a hair-raising question. Are, are you alone? Are Unfortunately for Kira, she was, and so were they. Upon entering the home that was parent-free for the night, Kira was allegedly bound with a phone cable, with her cell, shoes, and clothing taken away and locked inside, thus beginning the teen's night of horror. In a disturbing directorial debut, 12-year-old S allegedly filmed for social media while shouting instructions as C and R mistreated Kira, who outnumbered had no choice but to follow their orders. I'll do anything like Put your hands up, put your hands up. Put that way, that way. Lift up your 
and it wasn't just demands Kira was met with, but punishment. The teenager was confronted physically, and when that wasn't enough, harsh words were also thrown around. <laughs> Look at her <laughs> Bro, people are really mean, bro. <laughs> even without the visuals, the audio. Like, how do you even get to that point of being so mean at such a young age? Like, I never understood bullies, bro. I remember, in, I think, it was, was it in kindergarten? Dang, did I? I might have punched a bully in his stomach. But like. I'm thinking there there was like really some trauma within the family. You feel what I'm saying? Like her their dads were not present, or at least their dad was toxic, if if not present. Because what? And the fight paints a nasty picture as the derogatory language hurled at the teenager gets louder <gasps> and louder. Get the f up! And louder. Yeah. But as a blade loomed towards Kira and threats were suggested. More was at stake that night than the teenager's pride. Throughout the visit, Kira was allegedly restrained, injured with objects, and struck. With any attempt to escape immediately made futile as the girls exerted their power over her. In fact, the three girls were so constant that when Kira was struck with the blade by C, the teen only seemed to register what happened seconds later. Indeed, bruises to the ego and body were the least of Kira's worries on March 11th. Were you were afraid that they were going to, to seriously injure you, to render you unconscious or you? Yeah, um, multiple times. This meant following the girls' every instruction wasn't just the teenager being appeasing, it was survivalist. One of the girls was saying that they would me, so I just had to do whatever they said and just keep my calm, not like have an attitude because I knew I would get I wasn't even thinking, I didn't care what they'd done to me. I just wanted to go home, see my little brother, see my mom. Disturbingly, it turned out there was an audience for the footage being recorded, as R allegedly wrote in a since-deleted social media post, going viral, thanks guys, love ya, and with socials blowing up, after an excruciating four hours, the alleged torment had come to a close. This is what y'all doing now to go viral? Ain't no way. Bruh. As if showing your your boobs and your butt wasn't enough. Now we out here almost killing people. This is bonkers. But before letting a severely wounded Kira go, the trio allegedly intimidated the teen. Snitch on them. And not only would she risk her life, but also put the lives of her mother and her three-year-old brother in danger. The teens then allegedly showered Kira, had her clean up the crimson stain she left during the night, and walked her to the doorstep of her home. Certainly, there are some fears that would cross a mother's mind when she drops her daughter off at a sleepover. Will there be any adult supervision? Will their kid be peer pressured to do something that makes them uncomfortable? That's but no overprotective boy. instinct could have prepared Kira's mother for what greeted her at the door. I have visions of my daughter on the floor, to seeing her face for the first time. And the way she called out my name when she seen me, she was unrecognizable. There her daughter stood, black and blue, with eyes likely too puffy to meet her mother's concerned gaze. Kira delivered the lie the girls had allegedly fed her. She told her mother she'd been jumped on the walk to the sleepover, and the girls had courageously stepped in to save her life. They guarded her so she wow. couldn't tell the truth, but I know that something was off. The mother told Australian news source, The Courier Mail. She was extraordinarily fearful that they were going to hurt us. Bro, she the fact that they thought they had all, everything all secured. Pushed her daughter to the hospital where doctors sprung to action. The daughter then underwent treatment for her numerous injuries and wounds, one just barely missing a tendon. As for the girls who were allegedly responsible, well, R posted a video that suggested not regret, but a lingering pride in what they had accomplished that night. Basically, just someone, kind of. And it wasn't that the eldest girl misunderstood the severity of the alleged actions. No, she seemed perfectly aware of what had transpired. It was like, keep it to something. And even found humor in it. And we were just like, yeah, for these four hours, she did right. Mm -hmm. It was funny as as for the state Kira was left in, well, that too left R seeming satisfied. She's like full up. Like, all of a sudden, your photos are like, 
And as news broke that something so twisted had happened, not only in the small town, but at the hands of young girls, the community wanted justice, even if they had to hand it out themselves. While news outlets refrained from identifying the three girls, it seemed social media had no such hangups. The girls' names were hashtagged and plastered across viral videos, tweets, and posts, where heartless, cruel, and scum became just a few of the public words to describe the trio. And aside from the online name-calling, there was something darker being aimed at the teens. These menacing posts went along the lines of, They need to be taken to a dark alley. Government better do something with these girls, or everyone else will. However, others seemed more content not to lift a finger. After all, consequences for the girls were forthcoming. As one TikTok user captioned a video, It truly breaks my heart that people could do that to someone for fun, and how they are posting things because it's apparently funny. Now she has to live with that for the rest of her life and have major trust issues all because of three girls karma is coming for you guys and two days after yeah when i was when i was younger like i didn't i never really had a sleepover with my friend to be honest i probably had like one sleepover with my friend and and that was just me falling asleep at his house maybe like when i was in high school maybe i never i don't clearly recall having one because my dad was like yo just sleep in your own bed but it's also for reasons like this you don't know what type of parent or supervision your child is under and especially while they're just there like what is really going on at the sleepover this karma users had forecasted came knocking r c and s were arrested and charged with assault occasioning bodily harm deprivation of liberty enter dwelling and commit indictable offense and more all three appeared in the Maruchidor Children's Court on April 6, 2023, where media was excluded from proceedings. According to the Courier Mail, the girls are expected to be committed to the district court at a later date. However, R, C, and S weren't the only ones experiencing the after effects of what happened that night. Kira and her family, too scared to return home, were holed up in temporary accommodations at an Airbnb. Even Kira's education had been affected as Kira took the rest of the school term off all the while still allegedly being over text by the girls from one night it's traumatic really it would take me a long time to recover from it and despite the consequences the teens were now facing in court to some it wasn't enough through various online petitions and social media posts, the community called for the teens to be charged as adults and serve jail time for their alleged crimes. As one TikTok user captioned an upload, F those three girls. I want them to suffer for what they did. Another user wrote in their video, World, please wake up. Children are turning into criminals. And they're only going to become worse if not charged like adults. The TikTok user ended her upload with a plea for the teens responsible for what happened to Kira to rot in jail cells. And if not that, the death penalty would suffice. These Dang. may sound like extreme stances. However, yeah. online, there was the belief that these girls would go on to commit further, more heinous crimes, if not punished to the fullest extent of the law. As one user put it, future all the warning signs are there. In fact, it seemed one of the teens was already on a bit of a spree. See, Kira wasn't the only girl targeted in Queensland that week. Disturbing new video has emerged of a teen girl being beat bus on the Sunshine Coast. Nor was Kira the sole alleged victim of the eldest girl in the trio, R. It's alleged a 14-year-old girl was involved in bus. That's right. Six days before R hosted the sleepover, she was in another predicament that led to an assault charge after allegedly inciting an altercation on the bus. And whether it was this history, or being the eldest of the trio, or that she was most heavily featured in the clips circulating online, R had become everything that night represented and that the internet loathed. Even a video of R holding a puppy has sparked concern from the seemingly unfeeling way the unofficial ringleader of the group stared at the animal to the way she held the puppy like it was an object. One user questioned, does anyone see how she almost threw it but remembered she was recording or is it just me? And while some waited for karma to do what it did best, it seemed others were more than willing to seek vengeance on Kira's behalf, even if that meant committing crimes themselves. As the gruesome videos from that night continued circulating online, users took to social media to dox the girls' home addresses and their phone numbers, as well as those of their family members. Oh, wow, One serious. user tweeted, Go crazy, y'all! 
and go crazy they did. As one user announced, one of their houses is gone now. The rumor online was that C's home received an unexpected visitor that decided to commit arson, burning the place to the ground. And while this claim hasn't been substantiated, the other two girls what? did seem to be receiving retribution for their alleged crime. R and S's home. Imagine that was the wrong address. They over here burning down a random person's house. The place where the sleepover had allegedly taken place had become a clubhouse to vigilantes who recorded themselves trashing the place. Various TikTok users recorded walkthroughs of the home, or as locals had renamed the abode with graffiti on the walls and a Google Maps location, a mansion. In one such house tour, a TikTok user exposed the state of each room of the home, which now included spray paint, holes in the wall, and shattered glass. They even recorded the room where the sleepover had allegedly taken place. And if you could still call what happened that night a sleepover. But what did the family think of all this vigilante justice? Well, while R&S father didn't comment on the situation, it seemed their mother couldn't condone what her daughters did. In a post from her now deleted Instagram account, the mother allegedly wrote, we live in a toxic generation where kids that run amok on their parents, let's not give both girls the attention they are seeking. I take full responsibility for my children's actions. However, these girls are known to walk all over me because I'll never give them what they want and allow them to do things they see everyone else do. In the comments section, she elaborated, writing, not once have I ever defended my children's actions. I am disgusted in what has happened. I do not wish this upon anyone. My girls will be held responsible and it is ongoing. Please, I ask you, stop damaging the house. It was privately rented. Cheers. But after days of break-ins on the property, it seemed any further attempts to vandalize the home had been, well, torched. The house where a teenager was allegedly held captive and for hours has been set on fire as a community vents its fury. Yep, on March 29th, the alleged house of horrors had gone up in flames as news outlets and various TikTok users captured the arsonist's handiwork. No one was harmed in the fire as the girls and their family had already moved. In fact, the house belonged to the Queensland Housing Commission, making the real victims of the fire the over 50,000 people on the waiting list that the home could have provided shelter to. Police were taking the matter seriously. I mean, yeah, it's hard to ever get a positive out of a situation like this. It's just gonna be so many negatives that happen now. Especially considering a racially motivated flyer that was distributed in the area before the arson. Racist flyers have been dropped up and down the street in letterboxes taking aim at the alleged offender's cultural background in an attempt to incite more anger in the community. In April, law enforcement released CCTV footage of three individuals they believe could be connected to the fire, one of which appeared to put a flyer in a mailbox. But as the fallout from the sleepover continued, what did the teens that were now facing the ramifications of online fury have to say for themselves? Well, if they were speaking out, it was hard to tell. See, since the sleepover, R had allegedly created multiple accounts, which people believe was to capitalize off of the scrutiny or to hide from the backlash. However, others had done the same by impersonating the teen, making it nearly impossible to separate the real from the fakes. Had R really said Kira deserved what she got, excused her behavior as characteristic of a child who didn't get loved, or captioned a TikTok? Hey haters, XO, anyone down for a sleepover? That's up for debate. What's perhaps more telling is user responses that took R up on her late night hangout offer, with one commentator calling dibs on being cameraman, and another promising to bring their dogs to the gathering. And while it might be impossible to pin these posts to R, there was one account that appeared to be the real deal, and after the sleepover, boasted 74,000 followers before it was banned. There's also a screenshot of a story that R allegedly made on this account floating around the internet, where R claimed C was the instigator on March 11th, and that she essentially saved Kira from the blade-wielding C, then walked her home and accompanied her to the hospital. I have been to court about this, and we have apologized, and me and Kira are fine now, and we are mates, and she said she was sorry for even coming over to my mate's house. 
the post alleged. As for C, well, the internet was just as full of impersonators claiming to be the 13-year-old, who much like R, supposedly just needed love. And while S had a TikTok account that was active before March 11th, other accounts claiming to be the youngest girl had also sprung up online. One even took the liberty of responding to the allegedly false narratives surrounding the sleepover, captioning a TikTok, you can fake the full story, but we will always know the truth. But what was the truth of what happened that night? The pervading belief across social media was that the girls used Kira for fame, a theory based on the fact that the girls posted their alleged crime to social media. But what did those directly involved have to say? Well, according to a social media post allegedly made by Kira, the teens had one motivation behind her four-hour incident. They just wanted some entertainment. Allegedly, the events of what? the sleepover were just for fun and the teens had no reason for what they did to her. But was the incident really just for fun? The same way teens might film music videos, TP a house, or suggest a game of Ouija when they're starved for amusement? Well, social media accounts claiming to be run by R offered alternative theories. One account allegedly claimed Kira had been the instigator, who called R, her friends, and her family members' names online. She moved to our school thinking everything would be all fine, then tried to be our friend without saying sorry for talking about our family, the Post claimed. And while the Post made it sound like R believed what she did was warranted, the teen also allegedly claimed she had apologized to Kira. I've said sorry to you, Kira. Stop dragging it on. I'm sorry for harming you for four hours, the Post read. However, the Post claimed C was allegedly the real villain who had threatened to end the lives of Kira and her family. I stayed quiet, the account attributed to R claimed. Other accounts claiming to be R have also alleged the teens were forced by older men to harm Kira, that they did it for attention, and that Kira had tried to steal R's boyfriend. Understandably, these contrasting stories have made these it all, all the more difficult though. to fill- Because these are all accounts that may seem as if it's either um, the, um, the people that were messing up Kira. But we don't know if those are actually th them writing those posts. Filter through to find the truth. Still, it seems there is one truth that surfaced in all of this, that Kira is a survivor. While the 14-year-old has also suffered her fair share of impersonators online. Been so many fake accounts about me, and this is my only real one. See all these ones, like the Social fake. media is insane out And I think this is one, it has like 100k, and I'm like, whoa, okay. Kira's real socials are about moving beyond what happened at the sleepover, not dwelling on it. Online. I think I was only posting about the stuff which i would never do that because like i kind of just want to leave that in the past you know kira focused on the happy moments whether that was her cats taking part in the same lip syncing videos as other girls her age or thanking the community for the letters of support she's received indeed just as the public rallied against the girls who allegedly tormented kira they also came together to support the teen who'd been forced into a waking nightmare. That's dope. A GoFundMe fittingly titled, Support Kira Heart Through This Insanely Hard Time, was set up by the teen's parents with the intention of raising $1,111, a goal contributors easily surpassed as they came together to donate over $80,000 to Kira. So while the answer as to why the events of March 11th unfolded the way they did remains a mystery, with a strong support network and the community by her side, for Kira, it's possible that one day this will all just be a bad memory. Cruelty is always hard to understand, especially when it comes from young girls. Must be hard for you as a mum to think that anyone is capable of that kind of cruelty to your child. I can't think anybody is capable of that at all. But it's clear the way that the public chooses to react to events like these can either add further chaos to the situation. That scene has been declared as a crime scene. We are treating it as a suspicious arson matter. Or provide a stabilizing force that allows victims like Kira a chance to move on. I kind of just want to leave that in the past, you know? After all, this is the story of Kira Hart, the teenager who appears to be still recovering from the traumatic events of March 11th, 2023. Yeah, bruh. Just think, just think about being in a situation like that where it's like you're just completely overpowered by multiple individuals and you have to do what they say or else stuff like, or else you're going to get harmed. It's crazy to think about.
been traumatic, very traumatic. So that is insanely crazy. Hopefully she's able to heal from this situation, which I believe that she will be able to. But man, this story is just bonkers. And it's like, it's, it does seem as if they're doing it for some type of clout or fame or to be cool or whatever it is. And then social media nowadays, especially for the younger generation, I know is even more potent. And it's like they're completely raised up in it. TikTok, Instagram, and all that stuff. And it can really take over your mind and like have you have like a, like a warped version of reality. It's crazy, y'all. But I hope you guys did enjoy this video. Make sure you do smash the like button, subscribe. Turn on post notifications. I'm going to catch you guys in the next one. The same way you're going to catch me in the next one. Peace. Love you.